we're going to look at a variety of strategies for problem solving in this video. The first one that we're going to look at is look for a pattern. Now, Carl Gauss and his fellow classmates were asked to find the sum of the first 100 natural numbers. The teacher expected this to take some time, but Gauss was done almost immediately. How might he have done it? So again, we're gonna explore the looking for a pattern strategy. So we say that there are 100 natural numbers. Well, first we gotta remind ourselves what that means. Well, those are the numbers one, two, three, four, all the way, in this case, once first 100. So we're gonna to go to 100. And so we're really saying we want to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way to 100. So one thing that you might notice is that if we look at the pair of numbers 1 and 100, if we were to add that together, 1 plus 100 is equal to 101. Now, if we step back a second, and I know I didn't fill it in, but 99 would actually sit right in front of 100. And if we take the next number, which would be 2, with the previous number here, we're looking at 2 plus 99, that's 101. Well, that's an interesting pattern that we're getting the 101. Let's see if it continues. So if I increase the 2 by 1, but decrease the 99 by 1, that's going to also be 101. So you can kind of see we're adding one to this first guy, subtracting one from that guy. So it's going to be the same sum over and over again. So that's a pattern that we notice. And so it is said that when Gauss went to solve this problem, what he ended up doing is he wrote, um, I'm going to write S for sum, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus, and he kept writing that total all the way up to 100. And then he said, okay, well, let's write that same total in reverse. So we'll write 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus 97 all the way to 1. And then if we actually add both of these guys together, so the left side is really two of these sums, s plus s is two of those sums, well this is going to equal each of these pairs they add up to 101. And so we're gonna have 101 plus 101 plus 101. We're gonna have it really 100 times. So what we can say is that um, the total 101 times 100 is really the sum of two of those strings of numbers that we're talking about, so 2s. So we have then that 2s, or sorry, not 2s, we can um, say just s, is going to be equal to 101 times 100 divided by 2, because we're going to take half of that total sum. And that ends up being 5,050 is the total. Now, for number two, we're going to use the strategy of examining a related problem. And so what we were just looking at was the sum of the natural numbers from 1 to 100. So the way number two is different is it's still saying to find the sum, but it wants us to find the sum of the even natural numbers less than or equal to 100. So remember, even would mean anything divisible by 2. So this time we're really talking about this sum, 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus do, 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 all the way to, um, I'm going to stick 98 and then 100. So it's skipping over 99 because 99 would be odd. So this is the sum that it wants us to find. So we do this similar to the last problem. Well, that would make me want to write the sum backwards and see if the little pairs of numbers have a total in common. So I'm just going to write it all the way up to here. I guess I should have only done three dots to show that it keeps going. And then we're going to say um, the backwards it would be four and two. So here if we're looking for the pairs, we notice that two plus 100 be 102. Four and 98 is 102. So we're going to get this 102 over and over again. 
So similar to the last problem, we could say, okay, well, if we add up two of those sums, it's going to equal 102 plus 102 plus 102, a whole bunch of 102s. Now remember, this time we're adding only the even numbers. So that's half of the numbers between 1 and 100. So last time we said that this 102 would have been happening, um, well actually we said 101 happened uh, 100 times. So now we're saying 102 is going to happen 50 times. And that's again the total of two of those sums. So our sum is really going to be 102 times 50 divided by 2 which will equal 2,550. So again, once we kind of notice Gauss's strategy, we were able to use a similar problem and relate it to that previous one. Um, there's another way that we could have kind of done it similarly is notice that this sum, so I'm gonna write a little or here, the first sum could have been written as uh, two times one plus two times two plus two times three all the way to two times 50. So really taking out that two, which is why those numbers were even. So this is two times and we see one plus two plus three plus da 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 all the way to 50. And so we know that for Gauss's method, what we're going to be doing here is trying to figure out the sum of the first 50 natural numbers. So remember what Gauss had done was really kind of set up like 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to 50 and then the reverse and he noticed that special pattern of that numbers these pairs add up to the same thing. So if we're going to take that sum again and write it out twice what we're saying is that we're going to have uh, 51 50 times. Now, don't forget that we had factored this like 2 out there. And so then what we would say is, okay, well, then the sum of just one of those guys would be 2 times the 51 times, there's 50 of those terms, over 2, which will be equal to that 2,550 still. So either way is totally fine. Um, we could even go and generalize this just a little bit. So anytime you want to find the sum of the first n numbers, natural numbers, what we're really saying if we kind of look back is that the sum is going to be equal to it's the first guy, so that we could write the first term plus the last term. That's how we're getting that special number that we saw in the pattern. And then you're going to have to multiply that by the total number of terms, which in this case is going to be n, because we're counting the first n numbers. But then don't forget to take half of it. So this is a formula that you'll sometimes see when you're told to count the first n numbers of things or where it's changing by one term. Um, we could also write it um, a little more generally, which is written like um, s is equal to um, n plus 1, because really our first term, if we're starting at 1, is going to be 1, and our last term will be the n because it's counting just plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, times the total number of terms over 2. So sometimes you might see it like that.